In our first series of videos, I introduced you to the Digital Publishing Suite, or DPS tools, that are within Adobe InDesign. In this particular video, we're going to talk about overlays, specifically the audio overlay. Now, this will be a series of screencasts throughout which we'll take you through the audio, the video, the slideshow, the buttons, and the web content overlays. But in this first overlay, we're going to talk about audio. Now, overlays within InDesign, or the DPS tools, are a way for you to be able to add interactivity to any sort of document. Uh, specifically in this case an article that'll work on say an iPad. An overlay works a little bit different than say adding media to an EPUB. The term overlay is actually very descriptive. When you are creating text or let's say a uh, add a graphic or any sort of information, any static information into your article. This content, when you go to export this document, this article, out to say an iPad or an Android device, all of this static content is actually flattened. So if you're familiar with, say, Photoshop, where you flatten your layers, all of this content is essentially flattened as it's being exported out to the actual iPad. And any sort of interactive elements say audio or buttons that you would click on to create some sort of a, a movement or a change or go to a web page, any of these interactive elements, they're called overlays. And what will happen is, is that they actually will overlay on top of this flattened content. So to show you how this works, I have a little bit of a demo here. And we're going to create a simple little demo using uh, this image of John Coltrane and this clip from his song Giant Steps. So to begin, I'm going to just go ahead and drag this onto my stage and I'll go ahead and create a frame for this. And I'm going to go ahead and choose my fitting options and I'll go ahead and fill that frame proportionally. So now I have static content. I've got a graphic. Now when I go to export this out to the iPad, of course this and any other text or anything else that I actually include on this that's not interactive will of course be flattened and will be placed in the background of my document. Next I'm going to actually add an audio file. Now for those of you who are familiar with uh, adding images using the place option inside of InDesign, adding media such as video and audio works exactly the same way. So I can come up to File, and I can click Place. We'll come over here to my audio file, and I'll choose Giant Steps. And notice my cursor now changes to a little speaker icon instead of a graphic icon like you normally would see if I'm placing an image. So just like if I'm placing an image, I can go ahead and create a frame. Now, unlike an image, where the frame will actually con uh, be constrained proportionally based on the size of the image that I'm placing. This is a freeform uh, frame. So I'm just going to create, say, a, a frame about that size. Now, if you'll notice, by default, it's got these, these little uh, diagonal lines that are going through it. This frame is actually transparent, but it's also the trigger to begin playing the audio. What I mean by that is, is that when I go to export this out to an iPad, if I touch just this particular square, just in here, then the audio will begin to play. If I touch anywhere outside of that square, the audio will not play. So in, in essence, that is the trigger to begin playing the audio file. So just to show you how this works, now that I have placed this audio file into my document, if I come over here and I choose Photo Overlays, the folio overlay box will automatically show that this is an audio file where this audio file is currently located. I can choose to autoplay this file or even play this in the background across an entire folio. But what I really want is down at the bottom where it says preview. So if I click preview, I can preview this on the desktop viewer. The other option allows you if you have an iPad connected to this computer you can also preview this on the iPad. 
So I'm going to preview this on the desktop. And this will open up the Adobe Content Viewer. So here's my picture of John Coltrane. And somewhere over here is the button, or excuse me, the frame that I have placed my audio file in. So let's see if I can find it by clicking. Well, that's not it. There it is. And if I click in the same area, it will stop it. Now, obviously, when you're building an interactive uh, presentation such as this, that doesn't work very well for the user. If the user goes to this particular page and sees this, they have no idea there's interactive elements on this page. So what we need to do is we need to create some sort of a, a visual element, a visual cue for the user to know where to click and that something's going to happen when they do click on that. I'm going to close the viewer and go back in here to InDesign. So one way I really like to do this is to create what we like to call a faux button or a fake button. And you can do this very simply inside of InDesign just by simply using some of the shape tools. So I'm going to grab an ellipse tool and I'm going to just create a, a just a basic little circle here and I'll fill that with paper or white because we are working in an RGB uh, color space here and then on top of that I'm going to grab my polygon tool and I'm just going to create a three-sided polygon which of course is a triangle and after doing so let me go ahead and transform this just a little bit and we'll make ourselves a fake play button. So there we go. Let me move that over just a little bit there. All right, not looking to win any design awards here. All right, so there's my play button. I'll go ahead and group that together. And I can place this on top of my audio file. Now, for those of you who are familiar with how elements are arranged on a specific layer. This is, of course, all done on a single layer. So now, essentially, if you think about the way that these items are arranged, they're arranged by the order that they've been added. So in other words, the picture of John Coltrane is the bottommost element within the layer. The audio file, which was the second element that was added, is now up right above the John Coltrane image. And above that is now my grouped circle and triangle. So in essence, my fake button is actually sitting on top of my audio file. Now, this will just go to show a little bit about how overlays actually work, because once again, this is static content. The button that we've created is actually just a visual element. It's not a real button. We haven't added any actions to it. We haven't any added any interactivity to it. All it really is is just a visual cue, a signpost, so to speak, for the user to know that if they actually press that, if they want to go ahead and tap using their finger, uh, tapping on that particular area, something will happen. Now, of course, we're not spelling that out to them. We're not telling them, you know, click here to play a video or play an audio file. We're just saying this is a play button. Of course, we're using a universal sign for play being that triangle. But because this is static content, that particular graphic plus the image of John Coltrane are going to be flattened and going to be placed on the bottom most layer. The interactive element, in this case the audio file, will actually overlay on top of it. So to show you how this is done, once again, I'm going to go to Folio Overlays, and I'm going to click Preview, and Preview on the desktop. So there you go. Now obviously, if this particular element was covering the interactive audio file, in the final folio, I wouldn't have been able to click through to that specific frame, that audio file frame. But because of the way the overlays work, the overlay, of course, is now going to be on top of the static content, which, of course, allows the music to play. And that'll do it for the audio overlay. In the next screencast, we're going to take this particular article and we're going to add another element to it. What we're going to do is that we're going to convert this using the alternative layout function inside of InDesign and create not just a horizontal article, but we're also going to create a vertical article as well. That way, when you actually change the orientation of your iPad or your Kindle as you're reading this, that the article will work both in horizontal and in vertical orientations.